Hey guys, it's Sally here, Strength for Dance. When I'm teaching the full-time students here in Sydney with their anatomy and movement progressions, we always like to start off with an understanding of what our bony skeleton looks like. Remembering as well that nice and natural movement, the bones will act, the muscles will react. So it's really good to know what our bones are, the name of them and where they're sitting. So we're going to start here with my beautiful guest, Sid, the skeleton here in Sydney. And we'll just run through everything for you. So starting at the top, we have your skull or cranium. The cranium also has separate, separate bones within it that are uh, fused together with joints that have a very small amount of motion. I practice craniosacral therapy here uh, in Australia and it's amazing how you can feel the movement of these bones within the system. We then have the jaw muscles which within it sit the teeth, that's your uh, maxilla and mandible. We then come into the neck, we've got these two bones which are your collarbones or commonly known as your clavicles. This is the area that attaches onto your sternum and that is the only real joint attachment of your arms onto your body. The body part is called your axial skeleton and your arms and legs your appendicular skeleton. So this is your only real attachment. This at the back here which is your scapula or shoulder blade has a muscular fascial attachment onto the rib wall so it's not a joint attachment. We come here to your shoulder, glenohumeral joint. This is your humerus. Coming here to your elbow joint, which is a nice hinge joint here. We have your radius, which is on your thumb side, and your ulna underneath. Your wrist bones, known as your carpals. There's two rows of them there. And then we have thumb, fingers, metacarpals here, and the finger bones are called your phalanxes. And we have our proximal, intermediate, and distal phalanx. And then the thumb, there's just two, which you can see here. Moving down, this is the pelvic ring, which is made up of your left and right ilium, sacrum at the back, and it joins at the front with your pubic symphysis. There is movement. They don't just all move together as a chunk. We have separate movement happening here. Another ball and socket joint here, which is your hip. Coming out, femoral neck, femur. You have your patella here, that's known as a sesamoid bone, and it sits within the tissue and helps with the uh, transition of movement and torque around the knee. That's not torque, T-A-L-K. This now coming into, we have our tibia, which is our shin bone, which is a primary weight-bearing bone. Then we have our fibula running down the side, which leads us to our foot. Foot's not too dissimilar from the hands. We have our tarsal bones, metatarsals and phalanxes as well, proximate, intermediate and distal phalanx, and again, the big toe just has two. So that's very similar to the hand with our carpals, metacarpals and phalanges. Within the foot, we have our calcaneum, navicular, median, uh, medial, intermediate and lateral cuneiform, cuboid on the side, one, two, three, four, five metatarsals. So if you hear things being referred to as the second met head, that's down here on the second. Fifth met around here. So these are common areas for injury for the dancers on that fifth met and the second met. And then your toes on the end. First toe is the big one. Fifth toe is the little one. So I hope you found that brief anatomy overview useful. Goodbye from me and goodbye from Sid. Thanks Sid, it's great work. <laughs>